Hey everyone, Johnny Rock here with the last day of this video series. We're at day number four. Over the first three days, we got Quintic redeveloping his relationship with the water, learning how water is a lot like space. It floats you as long as you keep air in your lungs. We also taught him how to kick with looser, floppier ankles, as well as how to roll onto his back to get a breath. On day two, we taught him how to roll from his back, back to his belly, and add a couple of strokes while he swims. We taught him how to breathe to the side a little bit easier, as well as how to get his breath down to one inhale at a time. We also got him moving on his back more on day two, a little bit faster. That way he could do full lengths of the pool nice and easy on his own. Yesterday we got into the hand lead drills by doing head lead kicking and hand lead kicking. That was giving him more balance and body line in the water. Today we're gonna to be working on the keel freestyle, helping him breathe every two strokes, staying on his belly. Let's dive right into it. All right, as always, we're gonna start with review. Right now, I've got him practicing his traveling bobs. The next thing we're gonna do is get on his back and kick him all the way down and back again. After that, we'll review a kickboard all the way down and all the way back, as well as one arm pineapples. After that, we'll review the headley kicking and the handley kicking briefly, and then we're gonna put the fins on and get back to work. Here we go. Yeah. You don't need your legs on your back as much as you think you do. A lot of adults will forget to breathe on, the, on this exercise. You'll notice Quentin's doing a good job of controlling his breath, focusing on it, being consistent. When you can keep your heart rate low as you learn new things, you'll find yourself learning them way faster. Whenever that panic sets in, that things don't seem to go well, right? What's causing the panic? Oftentimes, it's the thought or the feeling of drowning, which goes back to, not being able to breathe. So when you focus on your breath, or control your breath as you swim, you'll have less and less of those moments of panic. You're there, but try rolling over like you did yesterday. Rolling over, grabbing the wall, standing up on your belly. Good job, nice. Okay, now we're gonna review the kickboard. Now I'm only gonna make him review this once, so we'll leave the kickboard at the other end, and on the way back, we're gonna do some head lead kicking. Head lead kicking. Flashing the best you can, especially the left foot, so long as it comes up and slaps the water, good enough. So we're gonna leave the kick port here so that I can get him doing head lead kicking back, rotating onto his back to get a breath today instead of on his belly. Yesterday we were doing this and I told him to start twisting his hips more before he turned his head. So we're gonna review that today, but without the fins. Good, get the chin up. And we're gonna stay on your back for a while. We're gonna stay on your back for a while because you don't have fins, so you're gonna have to spend more time on your back than you do your belly. You can roll back now whenever you want. Sounds like your breath is calmed down a little bit. Good. All right, so we got back to your belly. Then once you're on your belly, it's hard to get another rotation back to your back. If you need to pull your arms out in front of you and do like a big old breaststroke pull to get the momentum going, that's okay. Try it, it'll help you get the momentum going a little bit more. Remember, he's trying this today without fins. You wore fins yesterday, so getting back to his back was a lot easier than it is today. Good. I did. My hands are here, but I didn't help him do that roll. That was on him. Good. Sounds like you're about ready. Good. Good. 
and you're there. We'll just stop it there. Nice. All right, the last thing we're going to review before putting the fins on today is the hand lead kicking. So we're going to do the hand lead kicking only to the hot tub and back. That way it's a full length of pull. We're going to just do it to the hot tub and back, one arm and then the other arm. Whenever you're practicing the hand lead kicking drill, don't forget to alternate arms. Sometimes I'll watch even adults do one arm for 425s and then they're like, oh no, I forgot to use my other arm completely. Oftentimes you're going to use the arm to the side that you like to breathe. Don't forget to use the other arm too, just to get yourself feeling like what it's like to be on the other side of your body and breathing to that side, just in case. Just in case you're in an ocean, and the waves are coming at you like this. You normally breathe to that side, but now you probably shouldn't because the wave might hit you. You might want to try breathing to the other side. Tilt the back of the head down, tilt the top of your head down so your chin pops out. When you lift the top of your head up, your chin falls near the surface, you might choke on water. Put the top of your head down towards your hand that's outstretched, and so your chin pops out with plenty of space to breathe. I can talk as I breathe on my side. Good, yep, you're fine. Breathe. Breathe, take a few breaths here. Yep, clear everything out. You don't need the top of your head, you just need the bottom of your head. The chin. Good, that's much better. Good, good. There you go. Lay the head down. Yeah, hands up, head down. There you go. Now finish it off with two more strokes. Oh, he's going the whole way. We're going the whole way. We're going the whole way. Do it. Lay the head back. Lay the head back. Good. Okay, breathe in until you're up here. Good job. Good job. <coughs> On these next two strokes, you'll be there. Reach for the wall. <laughs> yeah. Full length of the pool right there. Dude, what? <laughs> nice job. I am so proud of you, buddy. That was incredible. We we're still in the review stages of today's day and he just did a whole length of the pool by himself. That was awesome. That was awesome. This might be his best drill. This might be the drill he takes with him and does the most when he's at home. Back. Lay this head back. Hold the arm up, head down. Very good. It's much lighter. Though. Good job. Okay. Well, if it's from the lack of practicing it to that side, I was wrong. Might be the lack of practicing to that side, but I was wrong. Your left side is better. Your right side breathing is better. Yeah, the left side. So you'll notice a couple of times there, he switched from breathing every two strokes to breathing every four. And that's why a lot of you adults ask me, why, why two? You know, you're thinking three or four is easier. It's harder on the breath, but it might be easier for you to coordinate the breath. Because sometimes you need a little extra time to keep moving and to think about when that breath is coming because you're not so comfortable just sticking that arm out there and trying to balance into a new breath. You're, you want more momentum and you're trying to get yourself higher in the water before you take that breath. That's the only re other reason I would be okay with breathing fours and like sprinting workouts and things like that. But by breathing fours, you might be creating more time between breaths to think about the execution of the breath. That's okay too. You don't have to breathe twos just because that's the way I'm coaching it. I coach twos a lot because I want my swimmers constantly breathing, never struggling for air. But if you need to prepare for the breath, and take three or four strokes between breaths. That drill was a breakthrough moment for Quentin. We're gonna do it two more times just to help him ride the train of this success. Then we're gonna get into the keel, as well as the okay drill and the pistol drill today to help give him a feel of the water. Whenever you do those drills, you'll feel like the water is now so grabbable, so tangible. You can hold it and pull it wherever you want. 
It'll make it feel like you have mittens on your hands. After that, we're gonna put the paddles on his hands so he really feels the benefits of his pull. Watch this. Lay the head back, there you go. <laughs> That's rising, lay the head down. Lay this head down, put the chin to come out. Lay the head down, put the chin to come out. Lay the head down. Two more strokes through there. Nice. The more tired you get while you practice, the more the wrong instincts will kick in. In water, unfortunately, all the wrong instincts kick in if you don't know how to swim. Once you've been taught how to swim, you start to gather more proper instincts. It's not like you're forever doomed in the water with your instincts. But at the beginning, when you're learning how to swim, one of the instincts that's hard to overcome is the lifting of the head. When, you, when you're in water, you want, or you think you want, to lift your head higher to be able to get a breath. That's gonna cause troubles for you because you're putting your chin so close to the water and your mouth's on your chin, it's not on your forehead. So the forehead doesn't need to come up this high. The chin does. How do we do that? Tip the head upside down. And you gotta lean your head more into the water to get your chin out for a cleaner breath. It's a little disorienting. You're gonna feel a little awkward, a little imbalanced, a little tippy. But keep doing it or do a full 25 with it like that and you'll be used to it soon enough. It won't take very long if you do this drill 21 times or if you just kick with your head down on that shoulder, you'll get used to it way faster and you'll be able to do this drill and then go into regular freestyle swimming, breathing very smoothly. There we go, wow, there we go. Very nice. Good. Tilt back, relax, tilt back. Bring the arm up. Meet the arm and the head in the same place. Yeah, the arm comes up, the head goes down. Yeah. You get the rest of the way in, you get the rest of the way in. You get the rest of the way in, good. So with the keel, I like the keel because it helps a swimmer develop a smoother relationship with their stroke. It won't necessarily make swimming easier. In fact, for some of you who are already good swimmers, it'll make swimming harder. For others who maybe are still beginners, it might make this stroke easier, it might not. But the reason I like it is because it's developing the right relationship with your technique. It helps develop the right feeling that you should have when you swim, which is more of like an ice skating or rollerblading feeling. When one arm is pulling backwards, the other arm should be shooting forwards, creating balance. What happens most of the time though is too many swimmers will pull one arm down and then the other arm hasn't even placed out in front in the water. So at some point they've got one arm in the air weighing them down, the other arm already back here pulling their body in a different direction. So you can imagine that just makes them feel really off balance and sloppy and chaotic. What you want though is to, like an ice skater, how they'll take one blade of their, their skates and they'll turn it sideways and push the front foot forward. And then they switch. This front foot forward then turns to the side as the other foot comes forward and shoots forward. So they're constantly pushing off the back leg, gliding on the front leg. Same with swimming. You're gonna be pulling the water back as you glide forward on that front arm. Then they're gonna switch. You're gonna pull one arm back as the other arm glides. But you kinda have to wait until this arm tags up, just like an ice skater. And if you think about it, it all makes sense because not only is it just physics, but we're all dealing with water here. Ice or liquid. When, you were, when you're in water, it's a pull and glide type of technique. Or when you're skating on water, it's a pull and glide technique. It's a push and glide technique. So with the keel, you're gonna hold it with one hand between your thumb and your pointer finger, and you're gonna push the keel out front. Now, many of you don't have a keel. This is a rare device. Many people who have been swimming their whole lives tell me that they've never seen anything like this. And when I first saw it, about three years ago, a little over three years ago, I had never seen one before either. So I'm pretty sure it's a new device, but it's excellent. If you have anything like it, or if you don't have a keel and you don't have any other substitution, 
then you can just do what I call catch-up freestyle or superhero freestyle. Catch-up freestyle is where your hands touch one another, thumbs brushing by one another. That's catch-up. Hands must catch up to one another and touch each other. It's not like ketchup and mustard. It's one hand catching up to the other. Or superhero freestyle, which is arms just will come side by side. Now, superhero freestyle, a lot of people get stuck then going back into their old freestyle. If you're gonna do superhero freestyle, you need to be very intentional about putting both arms out in front before taking the next pull, All right? With catch-up freestyle, it limits you. You won't be able to take that next pull until you feel the contact with your hands out front. So at the early stages, I like keel, then catch-up freestyle, then superhero freestyle. If you don't have a keel, then just do catch-up freestyle, then superhero freestyle. If you have anything like a kickboard that could substitute for a keel, something that you can hold on to, kickboard freestyle is excellent too. You'll grab the board with one hand, pull with the other hand. Now with the hand that holds the board, don't let that hand bend while the other arm is pulling back. Keep that arm fully extended out front, pushing the kickboard farther in front of you as you pull. The black stripe on top of this keel is my indication with my swimmers that they're smooth. If it's wiggly, they're not smooth. It's chaotic, it's all over the place. They're not very smooth yet. They're relying too much on their arms and their head and their upper body to start relying more on their legs and their core and their lower body. If the stripe stays smooth, it doesn't move very much, except for maybe when the hands switch, well then I know that you are a very well-balanced swimmer. You're using your legs to drive the stroke, and you're pulling and pushing like an ice skater. Breathe, breathe, breathe. One hand down, head down. There we go. It's different. <laughs> it's different. It's definitely a different feeling with the keel. Yeah. If you have the faster kick, if you got the fins on, it'll be an easier experience. I'm gonna tell him right now that when he breathes, he needs to accelerate through the breath with his kick. Yes! Nice job. Nice job. You got that one breath all on your own. Well done. How do you like it? I mean, I know you're gonna love it, but... <laughs> um, what I can see, though, is what I can tell already is that when we put this up, his freestyle is gonna be that much better. I can already tell, because this is causing him a little bit of, of, of chaos. Norm, uh, right before this, when we were swimming those lengths all the way down and back, that aha moment we had, he was not using a keel, and I wasn't prepared for him to do that well yet. Normally, I think that the keel would be helpful for him, but he kind of took a huge leap forward today with those lengths back and forth earlier. So now the keel might feel a little chaotic to him because he, he, he had a light bulb moment where things clicked, and now it's like this thing holding him back. But I'm going to keep making him use it. In fact, I want him to be able to try to go farther than the hot tub on these next two lengths because when we put it down, He's gonna feel so free. He's gonna feel like he is the king of his own stroke. Breathe, 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 breathe! Spend a long time breathing, you didn't breathe. Yeah, nice, nice. Breathe again. Good job, good job. Job. The anticipation of what comes next. He's getting better at anticipating what comes next. Yeah! Let's go! That was incredible. He's getting so much better at being able to anticipate what the next step is. You'll see that as he's taking his breath, he's already thinking about the next stroke. And then while he's taking that stroke, he's already thinking about the next breath. He's anticipating what comes next, and that's what's leading to the success of him being able to do it on his own, is him thinking about the next step. Taking less breath than you. Yeah. I'm gonna pull you off this wall, you're gonna kick it, yeah. Lay the head back. <laughs> okay, last stroke. Get it into the wall. Get it into the wall. Yeah. Woo. Finished it even with the tired legs. Good. Good. 
Oh, what's that left? Oh, that left leg. It's the one that's stopping you. Okay. Don't forget, everybody, he's got a numb left leg from the surgeries. He he was hit in an, uh, by two cars while he was on duty as a police state trooper. And he's now had two back surgeries recently. And so he's kicking right now with numbness in his entire left leg. And look at what he's able to accomplish. If you think that you can't do it, he is proof you can. Especially if you aren't figuring this stuff out on your own, come see me because we can coach someone who's got one functioning good leg. You can do it. And honestly, you've, you've seen people with amputated limbs before swim. Everybody can really figure out one way or another how to swim. Our bodies naturally can swim. You can do it. All right, so now we're gonna get him swimming all the way down and back on his own without the keel. He's gonna go back into those extended breaths. He's, I noticed on the keel, he was starting to limit his breaths to about two breaths, three breaths in between. And I really like that. I mean, if the more he works his way down, he doesn't have to come down to one all at once. But if he was at three or four, then he's gonna knock one breath off as he gets more comfortable. And he's gonna go to two or three, and he's gonna knock another breath off. One to two. One when he's com uh, comfortable and fresh, two when he's not. Over time, maybe a year from now, he'll be doing ones consistently. Maybe, maybe in a shorter amount of time. Sometimes people can pick this up really quickly when they're using fins. So I recommend wearing fins as you learn new things because it also also keep you safer. And whenever I'm teaching these videos online, sometimes I have this, this doubt in my mind like, oh no, I hope everyone out there is staying as safe as possible. So remember, swim in water where, it's, where there's a lifeguard present or a coach or someone who knows how to swim and wear a lot of fins. Fins do help you learn things faster and they keep you safer and they make the whole swimming experience more enjoyable. If you're training to be in the ocean someday, then yeah, go ahead and do some fins, some not. But if you are gonna be swimming in your own pool or you're always gonna be in somewhat safe environments, there's no harm in wearing fins more than you don't, okay? Normally I find my adult swimmers find that, that piece of advice very relieving. Wear more fins than you don't. while you breathe. All right, two strokes and you're there. Yeah! Oh, Quentin has now done his first official length in the pool all on his own with no problems at all. I, I saw no hiccups there at all. In his mind, there might've been a couple, but from the coach's perspective, he's swimming all on his own now. He went from not being able to do any of these strokes or any of these breaths on his own, now he's swimming lengths of the pool by day four. Two hours each day, it's all we did. Day four, he's swimming across the pool on his own. This is amazing progress. Drop a like or a comment congratulating Quentin, maybe a clap emoji, congratulating Quentin on all his progress, okay? This is outstanding. The amount of determination that he came here with is incredible. He's making all the progress and then some that I expected him to make. Legs. Oh, we got there. Oh, I thought we still have ways to go. <laughs> so now we're gonna move into some freestyle pulling drills. Like every stroke in swimming, there are three components to the technique. The arms, the legs, and the breath. We've already been over the breath, we've been over the kick. Now we're gonna talk about the arms. Now, a pull itself is three parts as well. You've got the pull, the catch, this is the pull and the catch, then you've got the push, and then you have the recovery. Now the recovery part is the part we usually talk the least about because it should just be recovery. If that means for you it's a straight arm recovery or it's high elbow recovery, either one works 
it doesn't matter that much. They used to think it mattered a lot. Now they don't really care so much how anybody recovers over the water so long as to them it feels effortless. The first drill is the okay drill. So you're gonna make the okay sign without spreading your fingers apart. Just let them relax right here. And you're gonna make the, the circle with your pointer finger and your thumb. When your hands are out in front, every time you catch water, you wanna be catching it with this half of your palm. Your body's gonna be slightly rotated onto its side, so you don't wanna put an equal amount of pressure on your whole hand, but rather try to feel like you're pulling the water in towards your body a little bit. So you're gonna pull in, and then as you push out the back with this drill, you're gonna slip a lot of water. It's not gonna feel very good. That's okay, just focus on the catches out front. The catches out front. The pistol drill, we will talk about then what happens when you push through the center of your body back through the remainder of the stroke. But for now, we're just talking about the catch and how you catch water out in front. You wanna catch it with a high elbow or an early vertical forearm. What that means is you don't wanna drop your elbow to pull because it's gonna impinge your shoulder back here. Rather, you wanna stay on top of the arm by rolling your shoulder into your chin or your jaw and waiting until that elbow is now angled up towards the sky a little bit more. So it's gonna look like this. Oftentimes I'll jam it in first and then rotate my hand. That's, that ought to be what your freestyle pull looks like, right here. So as you do this drill, make sure that you're getting high elbows underwater. The fingertips will go pointing down towards the bottom of the pool because you're pulling water with your forearm and your hand. That is the pull out in front, right here. All right, so you're pulling water out in front and then letting the hands kind of just slip backwards. It doesn't matter right now in this drill what's happening behind. Don't worry about that. Just focus on the pulls out in front. Okay, we're gonna do one drill, one swim. And the reason I always do one drill, one swim, I call these immediate application drills or IA drills. Well, my goal is with an IA drill is to help a swimmer feel the benefit of the drill by doing the drill and then feel the benefit of the drill by swimming. If you do drill after drill after drill after drill and then go swim after swim after swim after swim, it's a little bit harder to correlate the benefit of the drill with your stroke. But when you go drill, swim, drill, swim, you'll start to feel the benefits of the, of the drill perform in your technique. If you need to do extended breaths on your side, like we're gonna make Quinton do, that's okay too. But swimming with this little inhibitor here will make you feel like your hands have mittens on them when we open them back up. So you're gonna feel like you have big hands when we swim back. I'm gonna do the drill back towards Quinton one more time and for you guys one more time, just so he can see the drill. Watch this. The okay drill, Let's see how it goes. Wow, nice. Good, head back, chin up. <coughs> chin up. Finish it off. Good. You're gonna notice that that was harder for him than the last thing we did, which was just swimming regularly. This is a drill. So he wanted it to feel easy. We found out pretty quickly it wasn't. So now we're gonna swim back and he's gonna be like, that's so much easier. That's the point of the drill. Breathe a lot. Almost hit the wall. It's okay. You're good. You're good. You're good. You went with your nose. You took a big old breath in with your nose. I saw that coming.
Good. Nice. Good finish. Way, get, way to finish that one strong. All right. The next drill we're gonna go over is the pistol drill. All right, now we're not gonna spend a lot of time on either the okay drill or the pistol drill because they're pretty easy to conceive, but they're a lot harder to do. So once you understand the concept, you just keep practicing it and you'll get better at it. And you'll also feel the benefit of when you open up your hands again, they'll feel huge. Did your hands feel massive on that 25? Good. So his hands felt bigger on that 25, which is what we're looking for. Now it's the pistol drill. So the pistol drill, your fingers will be like this. So your thumbs will be tucked into your fingers. And what's happening now is you're gonna slip water out in front because these fingers are down. You're gonna slip the water out in front. But then as you push water back, I want you to flex your wrist. And I want you to literally flex your wrist because you're always traveling in the direction of the back of your palm. So if you were to pull back through the back of your stroke like this, eventually you'll be pulling water up and that doesn't help you do anything but go down towards the bottom. We don't need that. So as you pull back, when, you're, when your hand passes the center of your body or your heart, now you're gonna flex the wrist as you push it back to keep water constantly being pressed straight backwards, shooting you forwards. Okay, so the pistol drill, when you pull the arm back and you start to flex your wrist, you're gonna feel all the pressure now on the inside of your palm. It's gonna feel kind of strange. You're gonna slip water out in front, like I said, but then as you push back, I want you to push back as far as you can with your with your wrist flexed. That's gonna give you more time with the front arm to push it forwards. It's like an ice skater. Now you'll be pushing farther back, pushing farther forwards, and you'll be stretching your body line out like it should be. When we start to swim too short and choppy, we get ourselves into trouble. When we stretch out and lengthen each stroke as far as we can, you'll start to feel a lot more balance. Okay, so I'm gonna have you start flexing your wrists with the pistol drill. the head more in line with the spine if you can. Ooh, yeah, you're good. Back on your belly soon. You're going crooked. We're gonna restart. You're not that fast. We're gonna restart. Man, I'm fast. He can change his own course here. Yeah, he changed his own course. No problem. We're almost there. We're almost there. Yeah. Nice. All right, well, Quentin is now swimming all on his own. Yes, it is still with fins. And a lot of you out there um, commented on that in the Mark video. We're still using fins because he's still learning how to swim. You think by day four he was ready for the Olympic team? You're crazy. He is now swimming full lengths of the pool all by himself. I first just want to say thank God for blessing me to be able to come down to Austin to be spend some time with Johnny and his team to teach me how to swim, swim better. And most important, just my endurance, my breathing. I'm a whole lot better than what I was before. I was a little fearful of the water, and but now I'm more comfortable and swimming long distance. And if you have the opportunity to come down here to Austin or any way you can get in touch with Johnny and his team, uh, do that and make time. If you don't have time, make time to come down here and learn some lessons. And uh, it's well worth it. It's well worth it. Thank you. All righty, that concludes our four day series with Quinton. Again, we want to thank him for his service in the National Guard as well as being a state trooper. We hope he has a speedy recovery as he does more swimming in the water and his therapy. You guys watched him go from a complete beginner, even with a tiny fear of water, a little bit of a fear of water, not comfortable in water yet, to now he's swimming full lengths of the pool on his own, breathing to the side, 
confidently taking strokes, kicking all the way. He gets tired, but he's now got an incredible foundation that we're gonna be able to build upon. He's gonna do a lot of workouts on his own. Every time I visit Nashville for our for our Rocket Fuel Charity program, I'll keep up with his, his swimming and his exercises and teach him some new things. But I want you guys all to try some of the techniques that you saw in these videos and let me know if they worked for you. Send me an email, you can find it on the about page of our YouTube channel or text me right here. We're gonna start using our membership pot each month to fund our rocket fuel charity, which goes to paying for swim lessons in underserved communities where I travel and we bring in kids who don't know how to swim and can't afford swim lessons and we teach them how to swim for a week. That said, if you found these videos helpful, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel for free and consider becoming a member today. Head over to our website to check out the next merch drop and follow us on our other social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat for other tips and shorter tricks throughout the week. Now go get your pair of goggles, get some fins and get ready to rock it.